Uh, hello, this is the first part of the chapter 4.2, and we will talk about null and column spaces. And just to start, you're probably wondering from the previous chapter, why do we talk so much about spaces and subspaces? What's the point? And at what circumstances do we need them? Uh, there is actually two main reasons to use spaces and sub vector spaces and subspaces. The first one is when we are want to describe a set of solutions of a system of homogeneous linear equations, which we do in this course a lot. And we will call this kind of collection a null space. Basically, we have to solve our homogeneous matrix equation. And in a formal uh, sense, our null space for the given matrix A is uh, just a solution X of a homogeneous matrix equation AX is equal zero. And it's usually written null of A. Okay, another time when we might need to use a space or subspace and when we describe a set of all linear combinations for the specified vectors. And again, we will see this a lot in this course. You already saw a lot of it, but we will see even more of this. So subspace idea is really useful here. And in this um, case, we will call such collection, a, such vector space, a column space. And that would be just generally described by the right-hand side of non-homogeneous matrix equation. Basically, we would say that the column space for the given matrix A consists as a from of a linear combinations of the columns from the matrix A. And we usually call it a call A. And of course, we know that the linear combination of uh, columns of the matrix refer as a span. So we can say that the column space can be span from the matrix. And uh, you can see that although both null space and column space are consist of vectors, those vectors are quite different and have quite different properties. Although in the beginning you probably will confuse two of these spaces, uh, those are different and I would like you to go to the chapter 4.2 of the textbook and read very carefully through the nice table which describes similarity differences of the null and column space. But let's just uh, look at something, you know, a couple of very important distinctions. For example, null space is, we say, is defined implicitly. This is a solution of matrix equation, which we never know a priori. We have to solve the equation to find it. For example, let's look at this matrix and let's try to find its null space. And null space finding usually takes a reasonable amount of work because we start from the homogeneous matrix equation, which means that we need to write down an augmented matrix and uh, reduce it and see if the equation is consistent. Because if it's inconsistent, our null space is not defined. So, but okay, let's write down our matrix, just put augmented with the columns of uh, zeros at the right. Then we reduce it to the echelon form and the, our reduction actually gives us pretty nice results because we have three free variables. So we have three columns which does not have a pivot, which means that x2, x4, x5 is our free variables. They can be absolutely anything. So we can write down the solution of our equations, systems of equations. And uh, now we can write our vector x in explicit form. So we have five elements from x1 to x5, and we can write it down in terms of our free variables, x2, x4, and x5. So every entry of the vector x will have some kind of combination of uh, free variables. And uh, it's much easier to write it down as a linear combinations when our free variator variables are just weights. For example, for x2, we can combine the coefficient in front of x2 as 
a factor, for example, for the, from the first entry, our coefficient in front of x2 is equal to, from the second entry, coefficient x2 is equal to 1, and the third, fourth, and fifth entry do not have x2, so we put 0 there, and we will call this uh, vector u. And we repeat this process for the vector x4. We get 1 from the first entry, 0 from the second, minus 2 from the third, 1 from the fourth, and nothing from the fifth. And we repeat the same process for the uh, weight x5 and get the vector w. So finally, we can now write down our null space as a combination of three new vectors, u, v, w, and sometimes and some weights, which of course weights can be anything. So we can say that our null space is a linear combination, any x2, x2, x5 will work, or we can say that our null space is spanned by the vector u v w, which is again span is just linear combination of vectors. Okay. So it's a lot of work to find null space, but col column space define explicitly because we are just given column of the metrics. Of course, we can write them down. Um, so for example, let's look at the column space for the matrix A given here. And let's just find, let's just start simple and find the, just the dimension of our uh, vectors which belong to column space. Okay, so, and it's good to remember that our column space would be a right hand side of matrix non homogeneous matrix equation. So all we need to do is just basically match our matrix with a vector x. And our matrix has four columns, which means that our vector x should have four entries, which give us a vector b, which will have three entries which means that vector B has three components, or we can say that the column space of A is three-dimensional. And usually is number of entries with the, column, uh, with the columns formed by matrix A will always give us a dimensions. But okay, let's go ahead and actually find at least one example, some non-zero vector, which belongs to the column space of matrix A. And again, we can write our matrix, and we know that it's a right-hand side of the uh, uh, matrix equation. So we can choose actually any vector x should work. I like simple things. So let's just take our vector x as first entry is equal one and everything else is zero. Then by performing multi matrix multiplication, we can find one of the column space vector 2 minus 2 3 which happens to be a first column of our matrix a which is probably not surprising you can take any column and it will below, below, belong to the column space but here i'm just telling you why it is finally um we might want to know if a certain given vector belong to our column space uh, for example, here's a vector v, 3 minus 1, 3, doesn't belong to our column space. In other words, we are always asking, is our vector v is the solution of matrix equation of ax is equal v? Okay, we can then just again, just check if the augmented system has a consistent solution. Okay, we'll write our matrix A, and augment it with a given vector of v. Then we reduce to the echelon form and trying to see if the solution of this system consistent. Uh, good news, we have at least, uh, we have a free variable, so that's a positive sign. We also have a last row which has a pivot element, which tell us that this system is consistent. In other words, that our given vector v is in a column space of A. Okay, this is a little introduction to the vector and column space, and I hope you will start kind of get a grasp of how this space is similar and what's the different, 
And next time we will talk how we can describe those systems, not only with the matrices, but with the linear transformations.